After Israel's regathering, however, we note that all is not tranquil. War, turmoil, and strife continue between Israel and the nations of the United Arab League. But notice how this too was precisely prophesied in the 83rd Psalm. The language of this prophecy is almost exactly that which was spoken by the United Arab League when it was founded in 1948 for the purpose of destroying Israel. Keep not still, O God, speak, stir, O God, here are thy foes in uproar, thine enemies are alert, plotting against thy folk with cunning, conspiring against thy precious people, saying, Come, let us blot them out of being, till Israel be no more a nation. And so they plan with one consent in a league against thee. Well, Psalm 83 goes on to list the location of these nations that joined together in the league with the purpose of just driving Israel into the sea to her destruction. But we'd like to notice that the areas of these symbolic nations coincide exactly with the land that is now occupied by the United Arab League. Well, now by contrast with that prophecy, we'd like to note that other scriptures indicate that the present-day enmity that exists between Israel and her Arab neighbors will not continue for long. Because as you recall, Israel and the Arabs are in reality blood brothers. They are all children of Father Abraham. And prophecy indicates that all will soon be united together in a oneness of love and brotherly understanding as brothers were meant to have for one another. Well, seeing prophecy, current day prophecy, so accurately fulfilled as we do in the United Arab League, it strengthens our faith in other prophecies of the near future, such as Amos 9.14, where God promises Israel that once he has regathered them from all the nations of earth back to their homeland and establishes them as a nation, they will never again be driven out. God speaking says, I will bring back the captivity of my people Israel, and they shall build the wasted cities and dwell them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink their wine, and they shall lay out gardens and eat their fruit, and I will plant them upon their own soil, and they shall not be pulled up any more out of their land, which I have given unto them, saith the Lord thy God. Well, as interesting as the current day fulfillment of prophecy is, we'd like to come back to our basic question. Just why was Israel regathered from the nations, and why are they called God's chosen people? Well, over 4,000 years ago, God made a promise to Father Abraham, saying, In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. And then after making the promise, God wanted to emphasize the certainty of its fulfillment. And so he confirmed it with an oath. He swore by himself that indeed, one day he would cause Abraham's seed to bless all the nations or families of the earth. What a promise. But who are Abraham's seed? Well, Abraham's seed refers to his children, his posterity. Abraham's literal seed, therefore, is none other than the nation of Israel. Abraham's literal seed, therefore, is going to, in reality, be instrumental in blessing all the families of the earth. This is the destiny that awaits Israel. But the question is, how and when will this be? Well, the role of Israel as a nation of blessing doesn't fit the past. God said in Zechariah's day that it shall come to pass as ye were a curse among the nations, O house of Israel and house of Judah, so I will save you and ye shall be a blessing. Well, Zechariah thus puts the time of blessing future to his day. However, we see that from Zechariah's time to the present, Israel has been a nation that has constantly been ruled over by other people. And so they were in no condition to bless themselves, let alone other people. 
So since this promise was not fulfilled in the past or the present, it of necessity must be yet future. Well, this brings us to the answer to our question as to why Israel was regathered. We are on the very brink of the fulfillment of one of the greatest promises ever made to man. For other prophecies go on to show that God is going to set up an earthly kingdom of blessing for all mankind, and it will take place during the lifetime of those who are living at the time Israel is regathered and established as a nation. That was back in 1948. And so it will be in our generation that God is going to set up a kingdom in which Israel will be instrumental in blessing all the families or nations of earth. Let's go on to trace a few of the promises of God that lead us to the destiny of Israel and to all mankind. Isaiah 2, 3, and 4 tells us how Jerusalem will become the capital of the world. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us of his ways, and we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord out of Jerusalem. And he will judge among the nations and decide for many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning knives. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, and they shall not learn any more war. Doesn't that just thrill your hearts? Nations will not learn any more war. But a question that is still left unanswered is what will Israel specifically do in that kingdom to bless all the peoples of earth? Well, the blessing of all people will come about through a covenant that God establishes with Israel as referred to in the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. Under this covenant arrangement, Israel's prophets of old will be resurrected from the grave, such as Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, and many others. And after being resurrected, they will teach, guide, and instruct Israel in the ways of God's plans and purposes. And then Israel in turn, having first been taught by their prophets, will go on to teach and instruct all the other nations and peoples of earth in the knowledge of God and of His plan. Eventually, all who will be rightly exercised by this kingdom arrangement will become Israelites themselves. They will actually have God's law written within their hearts. And those that do will go on to live everlastingly in God's kingdom of perfection. Let's note a few more of the hope-filled promises of God to Israel and through her to all the world. God says in Isaiah, Be glad and rejoice unto all eternity in what I create. For behold, I will create Jerusalem for rejoicing and her people for gladness. Zechariah continues, Thus hath said the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall happen that ten men out of all the languages of the nation shall take hold. Yea, they shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. And another hope-filled promise of Isaiah. In the future shall Jacob yet take root. Israel shall bud and blossom and shall fill the face of the world with fruit.